aren't you? Please stand up back. Stand up with me. I didn't say sit down yet. I know you're all strong in the Lord. Amen. Just lift up. This is for the Lord. So do it with all your heart. Lift up your hands and just worship him. Hallelujah. Just press him. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, inhabit this worship today. The presence inhabit this place. Yes, take over manifest and just have your way today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for those who have been us. And we know that you have more for us. As we came and rose, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, we glorify you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Celebrate the love of God in the name of Jesus. We 
because we don't give thanks to God. Amen? Amen? But when the times are taken or are separated for a specific thing, we need to do that. I don't know what America is actually celebrating because as a nation, the what they celebrate in Thanksgiving has become controversial. Okay? It has become controversial. Some uh, American Indians are not excited. They're never excited about Thanksgiving. Okay? And that is because of what they're celebrating. And we're not going into that. Amen? Um, if, if they were giving thanks for a new nation, for harvest, and for the goodness of God, and I think that is good. And I'm sorry for whatever else that the other people are saying we don't want to celebrate. But beyond the celebration of the new settlers in this America, we are also celebrating our own settlement in this country. Amen? Amen? Amen. We want to ce ce celebrate Jesus. We want to thank God that we have a place that we all could come from our different nations and find a home and find a place where we can prosper and a place where we are raising our children and we are having an inheritance right in this nation. It's something to thank God for in the name of Jesus. Amen. So this week is the week of Thanksgiving and beyond that, as Christians, we know what we ought to be thankful for. We can never stop thanking God for the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can never stop thanking God for the gift of salvation. We can never stop thanking God for provision. And all of the goodness of God comes from that one sacrifice. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All the goodness of God come from that one sacrifice. And that sacrifice is the sacrifice that God gave to us. The sacrifice that he made on our behalf by allowing his own son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Amen? The Bible said that he that knew no sin became sin for us who are sinners. The Bible said he that knew no sin became sin for us that we the sinners may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in this week, I want us to take a minute every time you're celebrating, thank God for that salvation. Thank God for that sacrifice. That great sacrifice that God made for you and me on the cross of Calvary. And that is where, you know, when you have a, a door, there is something called hinges. Amen? I'm not a carpenter, but I hear a lot about hinges. And I know by the little knowledge I have about carpentry or about doors, that the door cannot be in place if it doesn't have a hinge. So what I'm telling you is that every good thing that we are enjoying, and I'm glad that we're thanking God for life, for provision, for protection, for security, for fruitfulness. But I want to submit to you that all these hinges on the sacrifice that God made for us with his son. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So when you look at the door and you see the door is standing, it's standing or hanging on a hinge or on hinges. And by virtue of the hinges, the door can open and close. And the door can also stand. I want to submit to each one of us this morning that the cross of Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross, and when he was caught up in heaven, he sprinkled it on the mercy seat. That was the blood of sacrifice. And upon that sacrifice, he Jesus our salvation and every good thing that flows from God. Hallelujah. And for that reason, as we are giving thanks to God and making thanksgiving and enjoying the talking and every good thing that God has brought to us, I want us to put foremost the worship and exaltation of God for that sacrifice. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. 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 And so um, this is my introduction this morning. Because this morning, the Lord will have me or have us start learning about sacrifice. The Lord will have me to share with us about sacrifice. And so my, the question is, what is sacrifice? What is sacrifice? I want to put here, I have asked you to type it so we can have it on the board. Amen. I always love the, you know, the dictionary meaning. Before you go into spiritual, at least, let's understand what the word means. The word sacrifice, it has three meanings or synonyms. I think that's what they call it in English. The offering of animal, plant or human life, or of some material possession to a deity, as in propitiation or homage. Propitiation can also mean uh, satisfaction, you know, satisfying for something. You know, when you when we sang this morning, he paid a debt that he didn't owe, and we owe a debt that we couldn't pay. But Jesus came and paid it for us. That was satisfaction, amen? So when the Bible talks about the propitiation for our sin, it means that he satisfied everything that he needs to needed to be satisfied so that we can move out from moved from unrighteousness into righteousness. Amen? Amen. And it also said that the sacrifice can also mean the thing that is being offered. The person, the animal or the thing so offered. It also means the surrender or destruction of something prized or desirable for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. As having a higher or more pressing claim. I want us to look at that um, number three. It's really... Hallelujah. Just want to thank God for our te technicians. God bless you. You are doing great. Amen? Amen. You are doing great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So the third one, that remember, uh, if you can read with me, I'll appreciate it. If you're aware, you can see it and you can read. Number three says, the surrender or destruction of something prized or desirable for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. Amen? It might seem like a whole lot of words and just going, but I hope you're understanding what that definition, and that's the one that I'm loving so much there. But I also want you to know that verse chapter, the second point says, sacrifice is the person, the animal, or the thing that is being offered as well. Amen. Hallelujah. And sacrifice, you know, can be the offering of animal and plant or human life. But also it can be material possession, or even as we go further and you look at verse uh, number three, it is a surrender of something. That something doesn't necessarily have to be physical, amen? It does not necessarily have to be a physical thing. When you kind of let go of something that you consider prized or dear to you or very important to you, and you release it, because there is something else that you desire that is of a higher value or that has a more, I love that. It said, as having a higher value or more pressing claim. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Okay. It's okay if you're just listening. You don't have to get, you know, just listen and get it. I'm not looking for too much, you know, it's exciting, but... Excitement without understanding will profit us nothing. So I'll be glad, brother, if you're really paying attention because I believe that this is of God. I've heard people teach about sacrifices and sometimes I wonder, Lord, how can I teach sacrifice and bring in what God has done for us on the, uh, you know, in the New Testament. I've heard a lot of teaching on sacrifices and it's only on coming out of the Old Testament. But I thank God for the grace that he gave me that this morning or as we go through this teaching, that I'll be able through the Holy Spirit to also pull it out from the New Testament so that we will all be blessed. 
in understanding of what sacrifice is. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you that even this dictionary uh, definition of sacrifice, especially the number three, has really blessed me. But I want us to go this morning to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Amen. Proverbs 3, 9. It says, just leave that on the board for me, please. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with your substance, and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. You can read this and say, well, where is sacrifice in this place? The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. And also says, with the first fruits of all your increases. Your first fruit is your harvest. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The harvest, Amen. the first harvest of your increases, your substance, what you have, honor God with it. And when you have to let go, and uh, when look back at point number three, that says it's a surrender or destruction of something priced or desirable for the sake of something considered as having a higher or more pressing claim. The reason I keep on a point, keep uh, keep pointing at the point number three on our board is because any giving or sacrifice that does not cause me to surrender something. Take something that I like, I desire, surrender it, amen? Or even feel a little bit of pinch, of destruction, or a, 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 a surrender of something that I love. And when you surrender something, you know what that means? You yield to something else. You have your first fruit. You enjoy your first fruit. It's your increase. If it's money, it's your money. And probably you've been praying to God for promotion. And you're praying to God for promotion because you need financial increase. And so there are pressing needs that you need to meet with your increase. But the Bible says, give it up. Give, it, give the first fruit up. When you give it up, it will cost you. Amen? And that cost, and that thing that you're letting go, is the sacrificial part of it. That is the sacrifice in it. Right now, in this season as Christians, remember that we are no longer messing with goats and bulls, and, and I just want to thank God for that. That we don't have to slay the lambs and the bulls and the pigeons and all that bloody, bloody businesses, you know, business. And, and burn them and ashes and all that stuff. But now we just go with basically money or substance, amen? But what I'm saying is it has to cost you. Whenever you give and you let go something that costs you, something that is of value to you, something that you enjoy, but you choose to let go of it, to give it in honor of somebody, in honor of God, in honor of somebody, when I say in honor of somebody, I want to say you give it, you can either give it to somebody, some person, some organization, or some entity in honor of who? God. Amen? Amen. That is when it's a sacrifice. You are giving it to honor God. You are giving it to meet a higher claim. And a lot of times, when we honor God, He meets our needs. He honors us back. Amen? Amen. When you honor God with something, God honors you back with something greater than what you have used to honor Him. Hallelujah. I want us to also just, just open Isaiah 43 with me. Isaiah 43 from verse 23 to 24. Isaiah 43 from verse 23 to 24. Amen. 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 Isaiah 43, 23 to 24 said, You have not brought me the small cattle of your burnt offerings, 
Neither have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with an offering nor wearied you with incense. You have bought me no sweet cane with money. Neither have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have made me to serve with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. Please look back at verse 23. The first sentence ended with uh, burnt offerings. Now there's a semicolon, and he started the, like the next sentence, or the, part that, uh, the, the other part of the sentence started, Neither have you honored me with your sacrifices. Neither have you honored me with your sacrifices. I want you to know that our sacrifices are as honor unto God. Our sacrifices is a thing of honor. Amen? God said, you honor him. He, he was telling this, he was telling the Jews or addressing the Jews in this uh, scripture. This is an Old Testament scripture, but God was still God. And he was dealing with his people. And he said to them, you have not honored me with your sacrifices. So that alone tells me that our sacrifices honor God. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and say, our sacrifices Honor God. Honor God. Look at some uh, another person and say your sacrifices. Your sacrifices. Honor, God. Honor God. Do you think that God is hungry? No. no. God is not hungry. Do you think that God is suffering lack? No. And he's waiting for you to bring something to to to, to so that he can meet his needs? No. 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 So when God said your sacrifices honor God. When, your when God is saying, you have not honored me with your sacrifices, God is telling you, I don't need your sacrifices if they do not honor me. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's not like God is begging you, oh, please bring, my bring me a sacrifice. Oh, please, oh, please, because he needs it. If you are bringing a sacrifice unto God, if you are giving God, if you are giving either substantially or emotionally, you know, I don't know how to say it. You know, sometimes you give physical stuff, like cash is physical, right? You may give material, like sometimes people will give a, a house, either to a church, to a charity, or to a human being. They can, like, let's, let's say God raises a millionaire in our midst, and we are all millionaires in, in Jesus' name. Amen. But there becomes a manifestation. And, and Chisum or Namdi or Nena, Chisum, Namdi or Nena, or Junior, or Christian, or even Anais, I don't know, it's going to be too late, they're still young. Well, they, by the time they grow, it will be too late for what I'm saying. But I'm saying that if God chooses any one of us here as millionaire, somebody wake up one day and say, I want to build a house for Sister Beth. Or I want to buy a house for Sister Beth. Okay? If you're buying that house for Sister Beth in honor of God, then that is a sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Because it's costing you something to buy a house for her. It's costing you something to buy a brand new car for Sister Rena. But you're not buying it for her because of who she is. You are actually buying it for her because you want to honor the God that she serves. Amen? Amen. The God that we serve. But if you're buying the car for her so that everybody will see and know that, oh, nobody bought a car for Sister Rena. Nobody is such a good person. Nobody is this, nobody is that. Nobody has money, nobody has this. Nobody is such a nice person. You are losing the honor for God. I mean, if the purpose of buying the house is for people to just praise you and, uh, and recognize you as a good person, praise God, then you are losing the sacrifice. You are losing the sacrifice because although it has cost you a lot of money to buy this house for Sister Beth, or to buy a car for Evangelist Rena, or to do something good, some good, you know, something good for anybody, even within the church or outside of the church. But if you have done it without honoring God, then your sacrifice means nothing. Because God does not need your sacrifices just for sacrifice sake, just for him to say, oh, he bought a house 
for this person. No. He wants you to give it as a means of worship, as a means of praise. I am giving you this, Sister Beth, because when I did not have it, I prayed to God and I made a promise that God, if you will bless me and make me a millionaire, I will take care of your servants. And so today, as the Spirit of God led me, I realized that I do need to build you a house or to buy you a house. And I'm buying it because it's a promise that I made to God. It's something that I believe. It's to honor God. Oh, God has put it in my heart and pointed and said, she needs a house. She needs a good house to live in. She doesn't need to be in the core. I know you're not in a co-op, I don't know. She doesn't need to live in, 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 in rented houses or anything, but I'm buying her a house, and you are paying down, you're paying all of it. That is when God moves, and when you do it, you are honoring God, and your sacrifices honor God. So from what I, then say so you can't give God an acceptable gift if it is not by a way of sacrifice. Think of the ways you can sacrifice unto God. There are different ways and different kinds of sacrifices. When has God not required sacrifice for man? Why does God require sacrifice for man? Why? Like I said, was it is it because he's hungry? Is it because he's lacking? But God requires sacrifice from man to know that we honor him more than anything. God requires sacrifice from man to let go of something, to give him glory, to show him that, God, you are more important to me than any other thing. When we fast, it's like a sacrifice. But what are you saying? God, although food is necessary, but you, God, are more important to me than food. You, God, can feel me. So, God, to show that I am letting go of my food today, I am turning my plates down to honor you, God, to show you that, to, to show the enemy and to prove that, indeed, man cannot live by bread alone, but by, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So, when, when you are fasting, and you're letting go of food, and you're not eating your food, you're not enjoying those things that you enjoy every morning, every afternoon, or even in the evenings. Even though you could actually go, your cupboard is full of food, you can pick any one you want. Your favorite food is there. When you eat those things, you enjoy them, but yet you're saying, no, I am not gonna eat food today, because I'm going before God, amen? It's not because you're going before him. It's not because you're not eating. That is not what matters to God. It's the intent. Amen. The intent of your heart. Why are you not eating today, Nami? Why, why, Christian, why are you coming before me for 21 days? And you're not eating food. Even though you love to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or even though you enjoy your lunch, but you're letting go of this for me, what is it? Why are you letting go of food? Why are you saying, I am not going to eat? It honors God, and when God is honored, listen, I want to say something here, and it's about fasting. Fasting as a sacrifice. It honors God, and when God is honored, he gives you what you need. Amen? Amen. It's not so much as your fasting is what made, did it for you. Your fasting is to honor God. Hallelujah. Amen. Your fasting is to honor God and to say to God, you are more important to me than food. I can exist without food. Sometimes, People have to let go. God puts it in the minds or the hearts of people to release something that is precious to them or that they need. God is doing that for them to prove or for God to prove to them that, yes, you need to pay your rent this month. And your rent 
needs to be paid. But it is not money that pays your rent. Hallelujah. God, I am not depending upon this salary for my rent. I am depending on you. So the money that I have for my rent, and you have put it in my heart to give it, I am going to give it, and I'm going to believe you to take care of my rent. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying here is that sacrifice is something that you give to God, that God honors God, that touches God and moves his heart. It's not because he needs it. It's not because he can't do without it. It's not because he can't receive it from anybody else. But it's because he wants you to honor him. Because when you honor God, God will honor you back. Amen? God will have you walk in places of honor when you begin to honor God. That's why God is speaking to the children of Israel as his children. He says, neither have you honored me with your sacrifices. Because there is something, something gives. When God requires you to honor him, if you honor him, he'll begin to honor you. He honors you more than you ever think that is possible. So it's not because God God has required honor from man because he wants man to know that he is the source. He wants man to know that when you let go of that thing, I am able to make you abound in Jesus' name. So you must choose God. It is when you choose to please God, when you choose to honor him over everything in your life that competes with who God is. What competes with God in your life? Sometimes it's your time. Your time. Oh, I don't have time. I have to do this this morning. Okay. We use a, 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 an example. That is your time. Your time. On Sunday morning, there's so much that you want to accomplish. And the time that you spend in church, you can use it to accomplish so much. But you let go and put down everything you need to accomplish and you come to church. Why do you come to church? You come to worship God. You come to fellowship with God. You come to be in his presence. You come to serve him. Offer sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving to him. That means you are sacrificing something. What are you sacrificing? Your time. Your time, they told us that time is money. Time is precious, amen? So when you give up your time for God, it's not cash, but it's a sacrifice, amen? So this morning I'm talking about sacrifice, and I'm talking about sacrifice in all realms. God desires us to sacrifice, live a life of sacrifice. It does not necessarily mean that you're giving God cash. It doesn't mean that you're, you, you're, you're giving God material. But when you live a life of sacrifice, your time becomes God's time. Your home becomes God's home. Your comfort becomes God's comfort. You want to be comfortable. But first you think, how can God be comfortable? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So you let go of your time and you come to honor God and God sees that, wow, they could have done this, that, and that, and that. And yet they let it go and they come in my house. You think God is going to not honor you? You think God is going to let you lose those things? Do you think that you're going to suffer loss because you left something to come and worship God? That is a no-no. I'm sure a lot of people have testimonies here. When they have said no to something that is very present and chose to say yes to the needs of God or the needs in the house of God, amen? Mm -hmm. Or anything that has to do with God. And they choose to honor God and let go of that thing. That thing becomes your sacrifice because it is something that you surrender. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It is something that you surrender. When you have your money, and you can't use your money to do what you want to do. And you choose to give your money to something that has to honor God. That is a sacrifice. 
It's not a sacrifice when I have, and it's still giving. I want you to understand. When I have $500 and I have my needs, will come, my needs this month is $350 and I have $500. So now I have a surplus of $150, right? And I give God $50. Did that pinch you so much? That is giving. And God loves giving. Amen? Hallelujah. But that is not sacrifice. That is giving. I want us to go I want us to go to the book of Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. I'm going to jump from New Testament to Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 10, I believe. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. If anybody find it before me, please read from verse 1 to 14 for me. having a shadow of the good things to come, and not to the very image of the things, can never with the, with the same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, making those who are both perfect. But then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified would have had no consensus consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written to me. To do your, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, and offerings of, for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. But that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he was perfected forever, those who are being sanctified. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you read, thank you so much, my dear. When you read the book of Leviticus, or you read through the first uh, four books of Moses, uh, you will see you know, the first books, four books in uh, the Old Testament, especially the book of Leviticus. You will see how God organized and, and told Moses and showed him different kinds of offerings. And different kinds of offerings involve sacrifice. Remember that I said that you sacri this, it tells us that we're sacrificing to let go of something to be able to obtain a higher you know, your, to obtain something that you have considered to be a higher or more pressing claim. Now, there's sin offering. There's all kinds of offering, okay? There's all kinds of sacrifices that we sacrifice unto God. Even the sacrifice of thanksgiving, okay? There are different kinds of sacrifices. So, in the Old Testament, something always had to give for something. You had to let of something that is pressed to get something else. I just want to stay with this particular scripture that we read in Hebrews chapter 10 and it's talking about the sin offering. Prior to the coming of Jesus the sin, sin our, 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 for people to gain forgiveness from God they had to yearly or even as the time goes, you know, as they sin, certain sin, they need to offer a sacrifice, and that sacrifice stands in for them. 
satisfies every demand that God needs for that sin. Okay? So, the, the yearly also, the high priest and the people have to come before God in the temple to make a sacrifice. And it's a sin of offering for sin. And it's a sacrifice of blood. They offer animal, they offer life. Okay? They offer something to get back. Why? The Bible said that soul that sinned shall die. And so when we sin, any soul that sin is already condemned to death. But by offering a sacrifice, yes, the goat, yes, the bull is very important to you, but you are giving it up because you are getting something higher. You are giving the life of that bull for your life. Now God will take that bull and the life of that bull or the death of that bull in place of your death. So you are no longer going to pay for the sin that you committed because the Bible says the soul that sinners shall die. But in that place, the bull takes your place. The God takes your place. Whatever animal that you are required to offer as a sin offering or whatever offering takes your place and it costs you something, but you're giving it because you need you have something that is you're giving it for something that is of more pressing claim, more important. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when you look at verse 10 of, of, of chapter 10 of Hebrews, he says, by the which we will are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The greatest sacrifice of all was Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, the Bible says, he came and sacrificed once for all. And so me and you can no longer mess with booze. But he came and paid for our lives. He was giving up. He belonged to somebody. He is somebody's son. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. That is God giving up something. Amen? For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? His only begotten son. I don't know how many of us will be willing to give one child out of the many they have. Amen? That is willing to say, this one child out of the many I have, you can kill this child and let this child. <laughs> I say that. Of course, you're not. Nobody. You love your children. Amen? But the Bible says that God has only one begotten son. Thank God that, and, and <coughs> praise God for, for, for his wisdom. Only one child, one begotten son. He only has one. But he sacrificed him. The most important thing in his life, in, in, can I say in his life? Yeah. The most important thing in God's life is his only begotten son. This is the only one that he said, I begat this one. He said the Bible records in John 3.16 that he, because of the love he has for us, he gave him up. What is giving him up? He sacrificed. God sacrificed. Amen? Amen. God sacrificed his son for us. Why did he sacrifice Jesus? John 3.16 Now whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. The soul that sinned shall die. But when that soul that sinned believe on Jesus Christ, because he has sacrificed, God has sacrificed him to pay for all the sins. We, the song we sang is in place. Jesus did not sin. He did not commit any of those sins. But he took the place of those sins so that we will not die the death. So God gave something because he had to get a more pressing claim so that he would get sons and daughters. Instead of one son, now as many as received Jesus Christ has become what? Sons and daughters of God. But that's because he sacrificed. Sacrifice is not an Old Testament thing. Is the culture of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If God is your father, the 
then you must act like God your Father. He asks us for sacrifices every day. You will sacrifice your time. You will sacrifice your, your, your comfort. You will sacrifice. There must be your life. Must be a life of sacrifice. Yes. As far as sin is concerned. Jesus has paid it all. And, and, and like we said. Every victory we have hinges on that. But remember that Jesus said. Take up your cross and follow me. What is that your cross? Is it not a sacrifice? Amen? Amen. Are you not letting go of something? Sacrifice. I don't remember the scripture really. But when, Je when Peter asked Jesus and said, Jesus, we've left homes. We've left our families. We've left our children. We've left our comfort. We've left our community. Everything good that we do. We even left the sources of our income. And we're following you. Don't you think that that was sacrifice? Amen? Did they not let go of something? Was it, did you think it was easy for them to just move from town to town? Ask the evangelists. Ask the missionaries. Ask the pastors. Ask the prophets that have to leave their comfort zone and go to a nation, a country they don't know, they've never heard about. They, that's a sacrifice, brethren. Quit thinking every time you hear sacrifice, you think, oh, money, 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 money. No. God is asking for something more than money from all of us. He's asking for a life of sacrifice. Hallelujah. A life of giving up something to get something better. He gave up his only begotten son, and now many sons and daughters have been born unto him through that one life that he gave. Yes, his life was very important. He left a place. Jesus also sacrificed. When the disciples were asking him, Lord, we left all. I think Jesus would look at them and laugh. And say, so if only they know what I left to come down here. Amen? Amen. Have you ever thought of that? When the apostles asked him, Lord, we have left all. It was Peter that said, Lord, we left all and followed thee. What are we getting? I want you to know that every time you sacrifice, you must get a reward. Amen? Amen. And you must begin to know to put a demand on God for the reward of your sacrifice. Because Jesus, can somebody find me that scripture, please? Jesus assured them that you cannot sacrifice without getting a reward. You cannot give something that is of value to you because you love me, because you're looking unto the kingdom of God, and you don't experience a blessing. There is a reward for sacrifices. Did anybody find the scripture? When Peter asked Jesus, Lord, we have left all and followed you. What do we get? Jesus said, you will not only get eternal life. If you have left me, you will get hundredfold, right? And if I should understand hundredfold, I should think that it's 100%. Or is it times 100? No, fold should be in multiplication. He said, you will get hundredfold of everything you left to follow me. And apart from that, you will also get eternal life. Eternal life is a done deal for a believer. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Every believer that walks in that calling, that walks in that path, that knows to live that sanctified life and continue to walk according to the righteousness of Christ has eternal life. So as much as we're looking forward to that great reward in heaven, he said there are rewards for you to claim on earth for sacrificing. Jesus sacrificed. And now he's in a more glorified position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anytime you sacrifice, I want you to understand. Begin to give to God from the point of sacrifice. 
Don't always come when it's very comfortable. Don't always serve when it's comfortable. Then you're just giving. It's an offering. God also blesses offering. But God does something with sacrifice. Our sacrifice honors God. Jesus Christ talked about the widow's might. It was not the amount she gave. It was the quality of what she gave. Amen? It was the thing, the sacrifice, the part that touched Jesus, that out of the millions, the millionaires, the big men that were given, he pointed that woman out. Nobody noticed her. The ushers, the people that collect money, the people that count money, because she gave the least as far as they were concerned. Amen? Amen. They will recognize the guy that gave one million. They will recognize the guy that gave 5,000. They will recognize the ones that gave 100. But this one that gave, is it Fadi? And I think Fadi should be the least of their denominations. Okay? But out of what did she give it? Out of what are you giving God? Is it out of a heart of sacrifice? Out of what are you giving God? Are you giving God out of sacrifice or out of comfort? You see, I saw a man of God. He made a demonstration. And he cut apple. And apple had seeds. And began to give people slices of the apple. And of course, apple is delicious. But one woman, poor woman, he gave her the seed of the apple to eat. And, she, and he said to her, how does it taste? I've never tasted an apple seed before. But I don't even want to try it. I don't know if anybody here has ever bothered to chew an apple seed. You have? How does it taste? Bitter. It's bitter. It's bitter. So when he asked her, she said it's bitter. She said, well, you have to learn that you don't, there are things you don't eat. Amen? There are things you don't eat. You do not eat your seed. You cannot eat the apple seed and enjoy it. It's going to be bitter in your mouth. Don't eat your seed. Because when you eat your seed, you will not have a harvest. Your harvest is what you eat and enjoy. But your seed is what you sow. Your seed will cost you. Your seed will, will feel painful because it's the seed. But when you eat the seed, you will not enjoy it. Because after you eat the seed, you are not going to have harvest. Amen? Amen? Because it's the seed that brings harvest. Ask the farmer. I remember one thing very well when we were kids. And, and during the uh, New Year festival, we usually go home. And uh, our aunts were farmers, my mother's sisters. And so our favorable aunt, the oldest sister, I loved her because, you know what, she never made you do anything. You don't do no house chores in her house. You do what you like. So since I hated to do dishes, soon as we get home, I go to her house because Shoma would not come there to bother me to do no dishes. <laughs> so I used to just go to Iyam's house. And I have a cousin there too, that is my mate her granddaughter, and I used to have fun. But when we go to the farm on New, New Yam Festival, right? When the young New Yam is being harvested, this woman, woman opens the crown, and when she opens the crown and sees the huge young tuba, she'll hurry up and cover it back. <laughs> and then she'll go to the other one and bring those, and then when, no, bring this one. She said, no, that's the seed. That's the one we're going to use to sow again. Amen? Amen? She said, that is the ones. Those are the ones. We can't take those ones. Those are the ones that we're going to use. We're going to allow them to greet more so that at the sowing season, we have yams to sow. Did you think we understood that? We're very upset. You see this big, big, big... <laughs> This stuff, you want to enjoy it because the bigger, the more delicious. But 
she would go and get the smaller ones. But then she learned her lesson. She closes them quick before myself and my cousin sees what's going on. Because she knew we would protest. The farmers never eat their seed. But it costs them. It's always like this. It's a sacrifice. Because they have to take the best so that that best can give them more. Amen? Amen. So we cannot in, in giving, in sowing. That's why I said our life as Christians involves sacrifice. It's sacrifice all the way. If you're going to prefer what time? Well, I can't come on Sundays because Sundays is when I, 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 I spend time with my friends and I have fun. Yes, fun is good. But fun will be like when it will be like when my auntie saw the big yam tuba and instead of covering it back, takes it out for us to eat. Then in time of sowing, she don't have nothing to sow because all she have is those sickly looking yam tubas. You must choose your harvest and you must choose your seed. Your time can be your seed. Your giving is your seed, if you want it to be seed. Amen? You have to. Your serving God can be a seed, a life of sacrifice, sowing, giving out something. Yes, in the name of Jesus. A lot of times, I, I remember so much when me and my kids just arrived this country. And then there was this culture the, you know, the, the ball dropping on New Year's Eve. And it's people stay up on television. And they're hooked on TV to see the ball drop. Every year, people travel from different parts of the country to watch the ball drop in New York City. And it's a time of entertainment and enjoyment. And then, I'm a Christian. And I'm used to ushering in the new year in the church. Okay? So every year, we choose to go to church. But you can choose to go to Times Square and have fun. You can choose that comfort. And you, you enjoy it and everything. Or sit in your home and watch TV. And say, no, I don't want to go to church because I have never seen the ball drop. I've never watched it. I want to watch it. You are just now exchanging something for something. What do we gain out of the ball dropping? Every year is this. I don't know if it's December, but it's the same thing. Anderson Cooper and the other lady, but I forgot her name, the one that insulted Trump and they fired her. So I think this year they're going to have a new person. The same people, the same fun, the same party. But if you come to the house of God and sacrifice that time, God honors you and you receive from God to live a fruitful new year. Amen? Amen. These are examples. There's so many other things and so many scriptures. But because of time, I want us to stop here. If by God's grace I'm permitted, I can go line, you know, little by little, and we can still study and see that God started sacrificing from the time Adam and Eve came into the picture. It took a sacrifice to keep them alive when they sinned. He had to kill an animal. God had to sacrifice that animal. Amen? Amen? And you see that he started a culture of sacrifice with them. And he still took a sacrifice to bring us back to him. And so you have to understand that a Christian's life is a life of sacrifice. Because if we are the children of God, we must live like our father. We must give up things to our father so that we can get more. Why did Paul say in Philippians that he is not looking back? He is looking to, for the pressing on for the price of the higher calling. Don't you know he is letting go a lot of things? 
at some point he asked them, that the, I don't know what nation, but he asked them, don't, we, don't you think we love, we love to be married? Have children, have wives, like the other apostles. Yet they gave up something. Look to your neighbor and say, you must sacrifice. You must sacrifice to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want us to stand up. Praise God. I want to, as we have heard, I want you to begin to thank God. First of all, we continue to thank God for the ultimate sacrifice of all times. Amen? Of all generations. That God saw it fit to sacrifice the, th the one that he loved most. His only begotten son. He sacrificed him for you and for me. Amen? I want, why don't you thank God for that sacrifice? It was because of that sacrifice that we are here today. Because of that sacrifice, we are in this house. We are sitting here. That one sacrifice, and that is a major sacrifice, that puts the demand once for all, for, all, for sin. We have that demand. We have, we've met that demand. And we no longer have to mess with bulls, dog, whatever, goats, and all the pigeons and everything. So I want you to thank God. Can you thank God? Yes. Give God glory this morning. Father, we thank you. We begin to honor him. We begin to exalt him. That sacrifice opened the door for me and you to come in. That sacrifice made it possible that we can move from darkness into light. It was because of that sacrifice that we can call this ministry Life Transformation Ministries because of that one sacrifice, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we bless God this morning, we came to ask God, Lord, I want to live that life. Peter and all the apostles, they let go of something. They were letting go, they let go of stuff. The sacrifice to serve you. Lord, help me that my life as a child of God will be a life of sacrifice. Tell I understand that when I sacrifice something to you, I get better, I get more, I get rewards, I get greater harvest. Ask God to give you the grace. It takes grace and courage to live a life of sacrifice. It takes grace and courage to say, you know what? To say to your friends, I will not go to the ball dropping with you. I am coming to church. It takes grace. It is a sacrifice. It is a matter of sacrifice to get the boldness and the confidence to take out the fatted calf and give to God. The Bible said that Abel gave a first lead. I never understood. I thought they all gave offering. When you read that story again, it says that Cain offered. But Cain offered out of the... But Abel gave a first lead. And I went to check what is a first lead. It's first fruit. First fruit. He took the first. Aha! He got something. He honored God. He sacrificed something that pained him. Hallelujah. Amen. And it was also life and blood, which has a greater place with God. Because life is in the blood. And he gave up life to God. Are you ready to give up your life to God? Are you ready? When you give up your life to God, it's a commitment. You put his service first. You put the house of God first. You put the kingdom of God first. You put the business of God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Sacrifice. Sacrifice to thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. It's going to take a sacrifice. And that's why he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that things shall be added unto you. When you sacrifice, all that things come. Hallelujah. So I want you to pray that prayer and ask God to help you.
with the understanding of this, this is not a message of condemnation, a message of blaming, a message to open you up to doubt, but pray to God that he opens your spirit, that you understand what God is saying to us this day, and you begin to move in that life of faith. Faith. Knowing that if God said, give me your house today, I know that if God said, give up this house, it must not be easy. But I'm also asking for that grace, that whatever he tells me to sacrifice, I will look beyond what I'm losing. Like Abraham looked beyond and saw that God is able to raise seeds for him if he will kill Isaac. But God is a good God. And when he did, because he was ready, willing, and able. And if God had not stopped him, Isaac was a dead man. When he happened, when it happened, God opened up and made provision. Hallelujah. And made a covenant. A covenant of eternal blessing. Let's thank God. Put yourself in that place of sacrifice. There is nothing to regret. When you begin to live a life of sacrifice unto God, when you begin to let go of certain things because you want to hold on to God, you want to, uh, the price of the higher calling. Karabo shanta raba basika, yere baba saka, rabo sekeri anda raba basa, yere bobo sika raba santa ko, hi raba saka tari raba saka rabo. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you today. We thank you for opening our eyes and our hearts and our spiritual understanding to grasp it today in the name of Jesus. That we would no longer hate sacrifice, but we understand what you are saying. That the word sacrifice is our best friend as Christians. Father, we thank you. Greater testimonies will come out of this house, Lord as we move in the realm of sacrifice. Lord, just as you have blessed the other ministries, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Kenneth Hagen Ministries, Jehovah God, you have blessed her. Jerry du Jesse Duplantis, you have blessed her. Oh, Jerry, oh, Jesus Christ. All the men and women of God that have lived lives of sacrifice unto you. Jehovah God, build up this ministry that we begin to move and operate and sacrifices unto God so that we will grow. So that you build us a house. Each one of us, Lord. Even as you promised Peter, Lord, I thank you that in this life we will even reap hundredfold Jehovah God and still get eternal life in heaven. And you give us the grace to overcome the persecutions. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.